hi welcome to another episode of the family couch i'm so glad you guys are here i'm so glad you guys are with me um let's just jump right into it we're going to start with prayer as always so fold your hands and close your eyes dear heavenly father we are so thankful to you we are thankful for the sun we are thankful for the rain we are thankful for your love and your grace and your forgiveness and we ask that you be with us today as we learn more about you in your name amen hi okay so have you ever had a best friend a best friend that you did everything with but then one day you got into a big fight and you thought you were never going to be friends again that's what our lesson is about today today is about relationships so our friends our siblings our parents our cousins all of that it's about the relationships that we have in our life and that maybe sometimes those relationships might become broken but god tells us they are always fixable we can always fix a broken relationship no matter how bad and god shares with us in the bible two stories about relationships that were completely shattered but through God's love and mercy and grace and forgiveness they were fixed so the first story I'm going to tell you about is about two twin brothers named Jacob and Esau now Jacob and Esau were very different but they were still brothers and they loved each other one day their father wanted to give Esau a very special gift. But Jacob, Jacob wanted that gift for himself, so he stole it from Esau. Esau. And when Esau found out about it, he was so angry, and he chased Jacob away. And Jacob went away, and many, many years passed, and they never saw each other. <coughs> How sad is that, right? To have your brother that you never see and they grew up and they got married and they had kids and eventually one day they met again and Jacob thought Esau was still going to be so angry at him for what he had done but instead Esau offered forgiveness he forgave Jacob and they were able to reconnect and become friends again isn't that a great story the second story I'm going to tell you about is called the prodigal son many people know it it's a story that Jesus actually told people to help them explain forgiveness and the story goes like this one day there was a man he had two sons well one day one of his sons came to him and said you know I think I would rather have the money that I'll get from you when you you know die now instead of waiting until after and the father went okay you can have it and he took that money and he went off into the world and he spent it on everything he spent it on friends that weren't really friends he bought things he didn't need until he had no more money left and then things were so bad Things were so bad, he was eating with the pigs, and he was living in the dirt, in the ground, and he went, you know what? I'm going to go home to my father, because I'd rather work for him than work for strangers. So he came home, right? Expecting his father to be so angry at him. His father had given him something, and he wasted it away. And he went to his father and went, Father, I beg you, please take me to be one of your servants. You treat your servants better than anybody I know. And the father went, oh, you are my son. I forgive you for all that you've done. Come home, be a part of our family. I love you. And the father then threw a big party. But you know what? His other son, his second son, was kind of angry. He was like, Dad, he went and wasted everything you gave him. Why would you throw him such a celebration? And the dad went, because your brother was lost, but now he's home. And that's how we are. 
No matter how bad things get, no matter how far from God we get, we can always come home to him. And that is so amazing. Sometimes we have relationships that are a struggle, right? We fight all the time. We don't get along. Or maybe somebody's really angry at us because they feel like we hurt them a long, long time ago. But no matter what, we can always fix things. We can always fix things. So today, for your game, for your activity, what you're going to do is you're going to practice forgiving. So forgiveness is hard, right? Because somebody will come to you and they'll say you're, they're sorry, so you're like, oh, okay, I guess I forgive them. But do you really forgive them? Because we need to practice and learn how to forgive from our hearts, from deep within us. So it's part of our lesson. If you look in the comments, you should find a li link for this. There's, there's a steps, I guess, called the broken. Broken steps. So each letter of the word stands for something. So like the B stands for blame more than confess. So whenever we think or even speak about what went wrong, we are often quick to lay the blame on the other person. We never think about what we did wrong. We always just say it's their fault. But what we need to do is to realize what we did wrong and confess to it. So for the R is that we refuse to accept personal responsibility. It's so easy when we have a fight with someone, right? To be like, no, they did it. It's their fault. I didn't do anything wrong. But sometimes we did do something wrong, right? Sometimes even if what they did was wrong, maybe the way we reacted was wrong. And we need to figure out how to accept our responsibility in the conflict. Okay, um, O, other focused. It's so easy to hang on to what the other person did and how they said and how they reacted instead of thinking about how we reacted, right? Because it's so easy when we get angry to be like, they, they did wrong. But we have to focus on what we did too. And then... The K stands for keep hanging on to hurts. So they came to you. They said they're sorry. We forgave them. Things are supposed to be better, right? But then time passes and that hurt, it still hurts us. And instead of letting it go, we keep it deep inside ourselves so that then when they get angry again, we go, but you did this last time. And we keep blaming them for stuff, right? We need to learn to let go of that hurt. E is to exhaust energy with negative thoughts about others. So, you know, when we hold that hurt in our heart, we allow the negative thoughts about what happened to just sit and circulate and circulate and circulate. And then we become sad, right? Because that's all our brain thinks about is that negative thing that happened. And what we need to do is to let go of it so that our words and our actions can be more honoring to God. And then the last one is really important. It's the end in broken, right? And it's the need to be right. Have you ever been in a fight with someone and you're like, my way is the right way. It has to be right. I see this a lot because I work with a lot of like little, little kids that are like, you know, three and four years old. And one person, one little kid will do something bad to the other one. So then the other one will do something bad. But they felt like they were doing the right thing when really they were doing the wrong thing. So we need to learn these steps so we can learn how to overcome them and how to fix relationships, and how to forgive. Because it's so important that no matter how bad things get, we can forgive others. Because if not, that, that anger sits in our hearts, and it turns us sour, and we become bitter and mean. And we don't want to be that, right? We want to be honoring to God, and we want to show grace and love and mercy and forgiveness, because that is what God wants from us. 
And that is so amazing because that is what we receive from God, right? Okay, let's work on the craft. Now, I gotta let you in on a little secret here. Today's craft I had to do in my kitchen before I came here because I don't have a stove in my living room. <coughs> so what you're gonna actually do, have you ever had some crowns that are maybe broken? right? You have a big old box of crayons and most of them are broken. And you're like, they're never going to work. They're just broken little pieces of nothing. Ah, oh, and that's so frustrating. Well, you know, God says that nothing is broken. Everything can be used for his beauty and his love and his power. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your broken crown Make sure to take the wrappers off of them and you're going to turn it into a candle, just like this. See? So what you need to do is you take your crayon, but you add a little bit of candle wax. I got this at Michael's. Um, it's a big box of it. And you're going to need an adult supervision for this because you can do it in the microwave or you can do it over the stove top, whichever works best for you. I did mine over the stove. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your crowns and your wax and you're gonna mix it all together and you're gonna melt it into a big old pile. And then you're gonna take a glass container, just like this. I got this at the Dollar Tree. You're gonna take your wick, so it looks like this, and you're just gonna place it in there. And what you can do is you can glue it down or like I took a little bit of wax, melted it on the bottom and placed it. Um, I don't know how well that worked because when I put the other hot wax, it kind of sort of discombobulated it. But you're gonna put it in there and then you're gonna take your hot wax when you melt it and pour it in there and fill it all the way up. And then I used a skewer to kind of hold the wick in place until the wax was done drying. And then all you gotta do is take some scissors and your candle and just cut it like that and now you have a beautiful candle because no matter how broken something is it can always be used for beauty isn't that awesome okay thank you for joining me let's close with prayer have fun making your candles share with me on our facebook page what your candles look like because I bet you, you guys out there can come up with some fabulous candles. Okay, fold your hands, close your eyes. Let's close with prayer. <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, oh, we just ask for your forgiveness in our life. We ask that you show us how to forgive others. Be with us so that we don't hold hatred in our heart. We love you. We love you so much. In your name, amen. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.